Scanning is new spinning. It's a quality initiative of servants of knowledge organized by Karnataka Gandhi Smarakanidhi and Shisharpuram Institute of Commerce and Management. We have our ministers, Mr. Karl Malmud, IT expert, USA. Sir, on behalf of everyone present here, I extend a warm welcome to you. I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Lawrence Leung, Dean of School of Law, Ambedkar University, Delhi. Welcome, sir. My earnest welcome goes to Nadoja, Dr. Uday P. Krishna, sir, President, Karnataka Gandhi Smarakanidhi, and Honorary General Secretary of Sheshadripuram Educational Trust. Welcome, sir. I extend a warm welcome to Sri N. R. Vishukumar, sir, Vice President, Karnataka Gandhi Smarakanidhi. Welcome, sir. I take this opportunity to welcome the initiator of this program, Sri Om Shiva Prakash ML, Digital Archivist. Welcome, sir. I extend a warm and inclusive welcome to all the faculty members and students to this program. Welcome to one and all. I now request Sri N. R. Vishukumar, sir, Vice President, Karnataka Gandhi Smarakanidhi, to address the gathering. प्रिय विद्यार्थी मित्र रे आ युवत तो बाहरा तुम्बा कुशिया संगति या किन तरह विद्यार्थी कल के नॉलेज इस पावर न तो निम्गला गुत्ती दे सो आ नॉलेज जिन है क्या क्वेयर मंड कर दो उन तेल लिखे नम्मा अमेरिका इंदा कार्ल मालमार्ड इंदा ब्रो आईटी इंजीनियर बनी दारे अवरो सारो जनिक माही तीना � आ गांधीजी के संबंध पर टेल्ला साहित्य वाला ना इन स्वराज जनवंता वन दो वेब पोर्टल नली आवृत्त संता दुर्ग में इंदा मत्ते आवृत्त संता शक्ति इंदा मारी नमः भारत के कुड़गे ना निड़ जारे युवत तो आवृत्त नमः निम्न जोते समाज मार्ग लिख बंदी जारे आवृत्त ना नमः मेलर परवाह की स्वागत है निम्मा विद्यार्थी गलन ना नम्मा ये सम्मान का कार्यक्रम के आह वन्दु आरा मुन्चे ना वो निम्मा कॉलेज नल बंदो इधर बग्गे पूर्व वागी मातृकते मारी ये कार्यक्रम मा सम्मान दा चना काग बे कौन ता ना मारी दुबे इधर के निम्मा प्रिंसिपल रण ता विद्या वरो मतो लक्ष्मीनारायण वरो तुम्बा साकारन आउरो निर्वाण है मरती दरे मत तुम्हें निमल्ला को धन्यवाद दे बोलूं थैंक्स। I now request Nadoja, Dr. Uday P. Krishna sir to address the gathering. Dear friends, scanning is the new spinning. The whole concept of this program is so wonderfully coined by Sri Om Prakash ji, and we are now trying to put the same before you all. As rightly he said by Shri Vishu Kumarji, see our idea is to see that young people get a, a, some kind of an opening for mentorship. Hmm? And uh, uh, that is one thing. And second thing is you will also be exposed to the technology involved in scanning and how you all can contribute to you know, the preservation and usage of knowledge. Today, information has to be handled in a very systematic manner for the use by all of us. And a lot of archival work has been done by Sri uh, Om Prakash here. And uh, I only request each and every one of you to make the best use of this opportunity. We have such experts coming from uh, outside to empower you, to energize you. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity for all of you to make use of it. I wish you all Godspeed. Thank you. I now request Mr. Karl Malmud to address the gathering. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Um, many thanks to to uh, Vijay Shina, um, uh, Shiva Nova, ma'am. I really appreciate the introduction uh, to Sri uh, Vishu Kumar and to uh, Dr. Uday Krishna. Um, and welcome to all of you. 
Uh, after me, uh, my two colleagues will, will speak. Uh, we are very uh, pleased that um, uh, Dr. Professor Lawrence Liang, uh, Dean of the uh, School of Law, Ambedkar University, Delhi, uh, will speak. And then after that, my, my very good friend, Om Shiva Prakash, uh, we have been working together for many years. Um, so my, um, I want to tell you a little bit about me. Um, and I'm going to explain why I'm so happy to be here at Gandhi Bhavan. Um, and then I'm going to give you a little demo. And that's always very dangerous, um, doing live demo uh, of internet, uh, because sometimes it doesn't work. Um, I'm going to have a few QR codes up here. And if you take a photograph of that, uh, you can, you, when you go home, you, you will have the link uh, to the Internet Archive um, and, and do things. Um, so my work for, for many years has been about changing how government works, uh, about making the government in the United States function better. Uh, I was responsible for putting very large databases up on the Internet. Uh, for example, I put the Securities and Exchange Commission, right, the, the regulator of all our large corporations. And at the time, the SEC did not want their data on the Internet because they were selling their information. And so I bought it. I bought every single thing, and I ran it for a year. And then I forced the SEC to take it over uh, and gave them a computer and gave them software and made their Internet link work. This was 1994. Um, and now they're running the software themselves. Uh, we did the same thing with the United States patent database um, and did that also for internet standards. I was deeply involved in the early days of the internet. I, I wrote nine books about network protocols but was involved with the Internet Engineering Task Force in setting up the governance mechanism. And the reason the internet is open today, right, open protocols, anyone can write software, is because this group of people, of maybe 1,000 people that were building the internet, just really wanted this to be open. There was another internet. It was a corporate internet that everybody in the big companies wanted to do, and that had expensive standards and terms of use and patents, um, and they were supposed to win. This is what IBM was doing and DEC and all the, all the big telephone companies, but our version won, right? That, that's the internet you use today. Um, so my background is, uh, I was, uh, oh, about 1993, I started first radio station on the internet. I, I, I invented, invented is the wrong word. I was the first person to do podcasting. Uh, I did a lot of the early live streaming on the internet. Um, but I have since gravitated towards these government databases that I've been doing. And I've been doing an awful lot of work in India, which I, I really like. Um, now, you may, may ask why I want to speak to you about Gandhi. When you want to change how government works, that is civil resistance, because the Babus never want change, right? They, they have a way of doing things, and you need to tell them why they have to change, and it involves strategy. And sometimes it's dangerous. Um, we have put laws online, and I was sued for putting the, the official laws of the state of Georgia on the internet, and they sued me and accused me of terrorism. We downloaded a court database, and our court proceedings are public, and the courts didn't like it, and they called the FBI, and they watched us. And, and because of that, I've, I've done a deep study on civil resistance. And if you're looking at civil resistance, you know, in the United States, we have Martin Luther King and many others. Um, there were the feminists in the, in the early days that got the right to vote. Uh, you, you can learn much by looking at how they do their work, but you can learn so much from Gandhiji. Um, now, the work I do is very different from what he did, right? The liberation of India, the, the, the creation, the creation of, of a new country. But it's the same thing at the end of the day. It's, it's trying to change what government does. And there's some lessons you can take out of his work. Uh, one of them is to be forthright. When, when you do something like post a database online, you don't post it and you know, hope nobody notices. You have to tell them. And as you know, uh, before Gandhiji went to the sea to make salt, he sent a letter to the viceroy. And he said, dear friend, dear friend, which was a, a little bit cheeky, um, but he told them, I, I don't have to go make salt. Um, you can change the laws. And so when I put the codes of Georgia on the internet, I didn't hide. 
I put the codes on a little thumb drive and I mailed it to the Attorney General and the Speaker of the House and I said, you will be delighted to know that your citizens have access to the law. And they were not delighted to know and they sued me. Uh, but you, you have to tell people what you're doing. And so that's a lesson that we get from Gandhiji. He also taught us that bread labor and public work are key, that every person should be doing bread labor. Every person should be doing public work. And our motto at the Servants of Knowledge is scanning is the new spinning. Um, so we have adopted that. Now, I don't know if you know this. When you think of bread labor, you probably think about spinning wheels, right? When he was in South Africa, there was a printing press at the ashram, and every person at that ashram had to do printing every day. Even Gandhiji did, and he did typesetting. He wasn't very good at it, um, but he was the consummate blogger, right? He was printing and communicating, and the way he won the Satyagraha campaign in South Africa was through the power of the word, through that printing press. And if he were alive today, He'd be blogging. Uh, he probably would have quit Twitter by now, but he would have been on Twitter earlier on. Um, and there's other lessons. Um, for example, when Gandhiji cut the deal with, with Smuts in South Africa, and Smuts increased the stakes, he said, well, you know, I'll give you what you want, but I'm probably also going to do some other things. And Gandhiji said, well, okay, we did not campaign on those issues, so we will take our victory based on what we asked for. So a lesson is you don't move the goalposts when you win. That's an important one. And there's a fourth lesson. Be gracious when you win. When you win, you don't say, oh, I told you so, you were wrong. Um, you congratulate them. And so when the Securities and Exchange put their stuff online, I was very positive. I sent congratulatory letters. And these are lessons that we get from Gandhiji, uh, we get them from Martin Luther King, we get them from Nelson Mandela, and we get them from many other people. And so what I want to tell you about today is our public library of India. Um, I call it Jay Gyan, right? Victory to Knowledge. Um, and it's a whole huge number of collections. We have over 7.5 lakh books online. We have 20,000 audio and video. Uh, we have very carefully curated collections. Uh, Om Shiva Prakash, for example, has been scanning all sorts of things. Um, it's a very, very large uh, collection. So if you go to this Jagyan, um, it's the super collection. And if you go there, you can see all the other little collections that are below it. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about a couple of those. The one I really want to talk to you to about, about today is the Hind Swaraj collection. Uh, that's my baby. It's the one that I've been working on for several years. And I've gone out and bought many, many books and gotten video and many other things. And so if you go to the Hind Swaraj collection, you'll see that there's, uh, when, when you first pull it up, it's sorted by the number of views. And Ambedkar is, is obviously the, the top number of views. But you can search your collection by title. You can search it, um, you, you can sort it by date published and by creator. And so there's a large number of ways to navigate this when you're looking for, for things. And one of the big things you can do is you can limit it to a type of, of, of object. And so let, let, let's see what kind of audio we have available. And as you can see here, um, there's a whole bunch of audio available. And I'm going to sort it by the number of views. And of course, the big one is a tryst with destiny. So you can click in on that one. And you can play the, the audio. All this stuff you can also download, right? There's no copyright on these things. And so we'll see what, what Nero has to say. One year ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now the time comes when we shall redeem now. So that's him on uh, All India Radio. Um, but we have a whole bunch of other things. So uh, how many of you have heard uh, Guru Dev Tagore speak? You ever heard his voice? Ah, it's, it's an amazing voice. It really is. So here he is, um, Tagore.
Isn't that an amazing voice? Um, I, I, w I was just blown away when I first heard that. There's something else we have here, though, that I think you will find impressive. So if you go down to topics and subjects, right on the left side of your screen, you've got all the keywords. And so let's click in on um, Gandhi. Uh, what did I do here? See, the problem with live demos is it's really easy to screw it up. There we go. Uh, Gandhi. We have all the prayer speeches that he gave during the last year of his life. Every time there was a prayer meeting, afterwards he would give a speech. And we have um, 157 of those. And what you can do is you, you can listen to the speech. And so I'm going to pull one up at random here. And this is Gandhi G. So that's Gandhi G. Uh, one of the things we've done with this collection, though, is if you go down and you scroll down, we have the text in English of that speech. And the, the, the cool thing is if, if you see this little area, CWMG, Collected Works of Mahatma Gandhi, you can click into the Collected Works, and you can see the speech. It's in English. But more importantly, you can see the letters and speeches he gave that day, the, 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 the letters he wrote the previous day, right? And then you can, you can move on to the next speech. And so you can walk through the last year of his life um, and see everybody he was talking to. You can hear all the speeches he was giving. And you can just kind of walk on, on through things. Um, now, there's something else we can do. So I'm going to go back to the top level of the Hinzwa Raj collection. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to stop sorting it by audio, and I'm just going to pull the whole collection up. And remember the trick that we can go down to the subjects and limit things. So I'm going to show you the subjects that are there. So one of the topics is Hinzwa Raj, which is the entire collection. One is Gandhi. We have 573 um, books by Gandhi. Uh, and about Gandhi. Uh, if you click on collected works, that limits it just to the collected works of Mahatma Gandhi. But I, I'm going to do Gandhi. And, and so now we're just looking at the books that, that are about Gandhi. Um, and there's a very famous quote of his, when embarking on civil disobedience, right? And he tells you how to do Satyagraha. And so there's a little button here that says text content. Contents. And so if you have a Gandhi quote and you want to put it in context, you want to see the full thing, what you do is you type in um, when in, uh, before embarking on civil disobedience and you click the search button. And what you're going to get, there are 13 books that have that quote in it. As you can see, there's the collected works. It's in there twice. And there's a whole bunch of other books that have it. And what you can do is you can click on one of these books, and it's going to pull up that volume of the collected works of Mahatma Gandhi, and it's going to bring you to the page that has that quote. And this is, it takes, it's a little bit slow sometimes, and it's working on it. And if that quote is in there multiple times, you're going to see a little pin at the bottom of the screen, and so you, you can click and you can click through every time. So if you search for goat milk, for example, or Satyagraha, there may be many many times that that's in there. But you'll notice that our, our little phrase that, that we were searching for is now highlighted. And so this is a great way to do research. So for example, if you search for the phrase, be the change you wish to see, as we know, Gandhiji didn't say that. That was in a biography about him. Uh, but if, if you've got a quote and you want to see where it was, you can search the entire collection for that, and you'll see that it wasn't something he said. It was in Fisher's biography of him. And, and so that's one thing. Uh, there's another one which I found very, very charming. So we're going to search for another phrase. Um, when Gandhi G uh, left South Africa, he gave General Smuts a pair of sandals that he made. Um, and, and so that is, uh, the, 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 the phrase is, I have worn these sandals. So General Smuts, after Gandhi G left South Africa, he wore those sandals anytime he was in his farm. And when Gandhiji turned 70, 
he sent the sandals back to Gandhiji and he said, I am really not fit to be walking in these shoes. You should have them. Um, and I'm getting no, no search results. I have worn these sandals. Why are we not getting that back up? We'll try it one more time and then we're going to give up on that one. It's in there though. Oh well. For embarking. Aha! Well, let's try this one. So the Internet Archive is in the US, and you know, sometimes they get blocked. Um, sometimes it's slow, and so you have to be a little bit patient. Okay, this is working now. So when you search for a phrase, you notice for each of these books, you have a little snippet below the cover of the book, and so it places it in context, right? Uh, presented to me when he was set free, I have worn these sandals for many a summer since then. And again, you can click in on the book, and it'll open it up to that page, and you'll see exactly where you are. Um, now, this collection has not only the collected works of Mahatma Gandhi, it's got the entire collected works of Ambedkar in several languages. It's got the entire run of the selected works of Nehru, 117 volumes. Uh, there's books by Radha Krishnan, uh, there's Sadar Patel, there's the Diaries of Desai, uh, there are biographies of Gandhiji. Um, and so I've tried to make this a, a, a fairly comprehensive uh, collection, and it's all open source. Uh, you can take these and you can download the books and put them on your computer and have them for yourself. Um, and so this is a resource that you have available. Let me show you a couple other resources. Um, uh, let me show you the Public Library of India, is what we call it. Uh, that's got many of the books, and those are not ones we scanned. These are ones that we were able to harvest um, from the internet. So this one has 582,000 uh, five lock titles in it. Um, so let me show you a, a, another trick. So on the left side of your screen, uh, you see the media type, right? You can, want, you can take just the books or just the movies. Uh, the movies, by the way, are the film division of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, which I harvested off their site. So on their site, you can't download them. Uh, on this one, you can. Uh, so we try to make it better. You have your topics and, and subjects. You have the creator, right? So the author of the book. But you see here, there's languages. So if you want um, all books in, let's say, Canada, um, you pull up the, the show me more information and you click on Canada and you say apply your filters and this is going to limit it to all the books on that subject. And then you can further search by title, right, if you, if you know the author you're looking for. And so you can navigate through this collection uh, looking by language, by, by name of author, by title, and as you saw, you can search inside of the book. And that works for Indian languages as well, uh, because we've done optical character recognition on, on that. Um, so I'm going to show you one more collection, and then I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. This is the India Culture Collection, which I think you'll, you will find interesting. Again, if you take a photo of that, uh, you can see it when you get home, or you could just go to the J. Gan collection. Um, so this is a whole bunch, uh, there's some books in there, uh, but the interesting thing are, uh, so we're going to sort it by view, uh, number of views. And there's something very special in here. Um, it's called, it's the Ramayana, um, at, which was on Indian television. This is a work of the Indian government, by the way, so I'm careful about copyright on these things. But this was done by the government. Um, and so we've got every episode there um, with closed captions in different languages. There's also a huge number of, of uh, videos and audio of, of folks. Um, so for example, let me scroll past the Ramayana, which is by far the, the most, uh, I'm going to just do this by title really quickly. Um, two seconds. There we go. So, for example, the 150th birth anniversary of Guru Dev uh, Rabindranath, um, and and uh, all that stuff. Again, you can listen to it. Um, and uh, by the way, with the text, there's the ability to speak the text, right? So even though it's 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 a printed book, it'll speak it to you. Um, so if you want to listen to it while driving, for example, you can do that. 
Um, so that, that's my quick little demo. Uh, we're going to turn it over to Lawrence Yang at this point, and he's going to talk. And then after that, we're going to have Om Shiva Prakash show you some amazing stuff he's been doing in your language and many other languages. Um, so that's my demo, and we're ready to go here. Lawrence, it's up to you. I'm going to put the mic the way it's supposed to be. And when they're done, we're going to do questions and answers. I, I asked everybody to keep it kind of short so that there's time for interaction, because I'm, I'm sure you'll have some questions. And if you don't have questions, we'll ask you questions. So. Uh, yeah, can you hear me at the back? Thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Carl. Good morning. And Yelirigu, Namaskaram. I'm from Bangalore, so my Kannada is certainly good enough to understand, but my Kannada is not good enough to give a technical talk, so I'll speak in English today. Let me start with this idea of scanning as a new spinning. Right? I mean, it's a very, very powerful kind of quote and a powerful image. It's a powerful metaphor. And it brings together two very different kinds of things. You associate you know, spinning with a certain idea of uh, old technology, uh, and one which is dependent in a way on a very analog form of the hand doing something. And you associate scanning with a digital moment with a high-end technology associated with computers, with you know, high-end scanning machines, et cetera. So what's the connection between the two? And how do we even think of any kind of connection between the two? And through that question, I really want to ask an interesting question, which is, would Gandhiji have had anything to say about copyright? Right? Because this is really one of the key questions that we are facing today. So I want to try to draw a link between the two. And as Carl suggested, the moment you look at any practice that attempts to free information, the moment you try to democratize knowledge, you are already posing a challenge to existing power structures and hierarchies. You are already, in a way, acting or you know, engaging in civil resistance. And I want to see how these two are connected. But I want to ask you, by way of a you know, light quiz, a few questions first. First, an easy one. Who is the Nightingale of India? Absolutely. So Sarojini Naidu had a very playful relationship with Mahatma Gandhi, right? She would often tease him. And Sarojini Naidu had a very affectionate nickname for Mahatma Gandhi. What was her nickname for Mahatma Gandhi? Carl will give you a um, set of unannounced gifts for anyone who can get this, without Googling. No one? OK, let me give you a clue. Hmm? Oh, no, no, that was all everyone's you know, affectionate, reverent name. Hers was a little more naughty. And the reason that she had this nickname was because of Gandhiji's years. If you've seen Gandhiji's portrait, you know that his years were very prominently outside. right? So what was her nickname for him? Now you can Google if you want. Mickey Mouse, absolutely, yeah. So Sarojini Naidu's nickname for Mahatma Gandhi was Mickey Mouse. So I want to begin my story with the story of two Mickey Mouses, which actually brings these concerns of scanning and spinning together, right? Mickey Mouse, the character that we all know, that we all have enjoyed as children, is also a very, very, very valuable property. Walt Disney is the owner of the copyright in Mickey Mouse, right? And Mickey Mouse has been responsible, in many ways, for the bad turn in copyright law. What do I mean by this? Copyright law generally dictates the number of years that a work is protected for, after which it comes into the public domain, right? So initially, when copyright began, copyright was for 20 years. So a person had exclusive rights to a work for 20 years, after which it was assumed that the work should come into the public domain. Why? Because copyright was meant to promote public knowledge. It was meant to promote a public good. And the idea was that everyone creates something out of something else. All of you didn't know what Saroji Naidu's nickname was, but Google told you the answer, right? Somebody has gone and put the information out there in the public domain, and that adds to a common pool of knowledge, adds to a common wealth of knowledge. 
So initially when copyright began, the argument was that yes, let's create a system that creates some kind of a incentive for authors for a short period of time, after which the work should come into the public domain. 20 years they thought was a reasonable time. But what is the term of copyright now? It varies from country to country. In India, for example, what is the term of copyright? 60 years after the death of the author, which means technically, I don't want this to happen for sure, but let's say by some bad faith I die of boredom today, right? It's only 60 years from now that my work comes into the public domain. And very important question is, how do you incentivize someone who's been dead for 60 years to actually write or to create anything at all? So why has this happened? Why has the term of copyright extended forever and forever? Mickey Mouse, right? So when the copyright in Mickey Mouse was coming to an end, can you imagine Disney Corporation? Every day imagined, oh my God, the amount of money that we create through the licensing of Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse t-shirts, Mickey Mouse bags, Mickey Mouse water bottles, Mickey Mouse posters, Mickey Mouse films. Imagine their fear that, oh, what if this copyright in Mickey Mouse comes to an end and everyone is allowed to produce Mickey Mouse watches without paying us any money. So they said, no, we need to really lobby the lawmakers, in that case, the US Congress, to extend the life of copyright. And they said, we'll extend it by 10 years. After that 10 years got to an end, again they extended by another 10 years, right? So it's this perpetual idea for the owners of large content, especially the large entertainment houses, ideally what they want is for copyright to be perpetual. Right? And there are huge, huge consequences for that. Let's cut to our second Mickey Mouse, Gandhiji. In 2008, the copyright in Gandhiji's works were coming to an end, right? Because it had been 60 years after the death of Gandhiji. The Navjeevan Trust, which owns all of the works in Gandhiji's work, in, in, in works, was asked by many people that the term of copyright should be extended for 10 years, right? To ensure that the copyright over Gandhiji's work extends. And this was not new. It had happened 10 years before. When the works, when the copyright in the works of Rabindranath Tagore had come to an end, the trust that owns Tagore's copyright had extended copyright by 10 years. So India it used to be lifetime of the author plus 50 years after the death. It's because of Tagore, it became 60. So when Gandhiji's copyright came, they said, let's extend it, let's make it 70. The Navjeevan Trust said, asked one question. What would Bapuji have wanted? Would he have supported the extension of copyright by 10 years, or would he have been against it? What do you think? He was against it, right? So the copyright in India was not extended, and it remained 60 years. And this is really interesting, because you would want to ask the question, why did the Navjeevan Trust think that Gandhiji would not have supported extending copyright in this way? And the answer to that can be found in Bapuji's words. In 1910, when Hind Swaraj was written, and Hind Swaraj was written you know, literally on a ship, Gandhiji traveling from, from India to England, in conversation with, you know, there was a, a tension between what is the best way to fight colonialism? Is it through the use of violence or is it through nonviolent means, right? One very interesting thing that people have not really spoken much about is when you turn to the first few pages of Hind Swaraj, normally what you find in the first few pages, you find the information of the publishers, and you always find copyright sign, copyright owned by so-and-so, right? 1910, 120 years ago, what did you find in Hind Swaraj? No rights reserved. Huh? Why? Amazing. This is an amazing, amazing kind of, you know, foresight that Bapuji had. Why did Gandhiji not assert copyright over Hind Swaraj? 
what did he think was the problem with asserting copyright? And that really you know, raises a much larger question. And this was not the only time. This happened several times. When he wrote his autobiography, which many of you, I hope, have read, The Story of My Experiments with Truth, initially it was serialized. Right? It wasn't written as, as a book. It was serialized in various newspapers. And what Bapuji had said was that newspapers were free to publish them. Now, you can imagine, obviously, a person of his stature. Many newspapers were serializing you know, the, the autobiography. But not all of them were doing it for entirely benign reasons. Many of them were doing it for commercial reasons, because it would improve or extend their circulation. And they were also running advertisements along with you know, the, the, the serializing of Bapuji's autobiography. And so people brought it to the attention of Gandhiji and said that you must assert your copyright and prevent them from misusing your copyright in this way. Again, Gandhiji said, I will not because I do not believe in copyright as a system, right? I want my ideas to circulate freely. And of course, I may not have, I may not be very happy with the fact that people are commercially using advertisements, etc. But if that is a cost to be paid, then so be it. If anyone is interested, there's a wonderful article written by a copyright scholar called Sham Krishna Balganesh, also from Bangalore, actually, uh, but who teaches currently in the US on copyright and Gandhi. Wonderful article. Please have a look at, look at it. The third encounter that Gandhiji has with copyright is, again, when he brings the, uh, the, his, his you know, newsletter slash magazine, Harijan. And Harijan is being reproduced uh, en masse by a large number of people. Again, Gandhiji is asked to assert his copyright, and he refuses. So we have these two Mickey Mouses. One Mickey Mouse that extends copyright forever, the other Mickey Mouse that refuses and rejects the use of copyright. And this is a really, really interesting puzzle. Let's see which Mickey Mouse was right. Let's take the foundational question here, the presumption. What is copyright? In law, copyright is a subspecies of something called intellectual property, right? Which means if I own a mobile phone, I have paid for the mobile phone, I'm the owner of the mobile phone. If I want to, I can give the mobile phone to someone. If I want to break the mobile phone, I can break the mobile phone. Right? I can do many things with it. I'm the owner of it. And you know this. You may own a pen. You may own a car. You may own a book. You may own a doll. Many things that you could own, and that's your own. It's your property. But what about intellectual property? Intellectual property starts on a similar premise, that you are the owner of things that are created from your mind, right? You write a poem, of course you're the owner of the poem. You write a story, of course you're the owner of the story. But the question is, are you the owner in the same way that you're the owner of a pen? Is a pen a physical, tangible good the same as a poem? And there are fundamental philosophical questions involved here. And the best way to illustrate this is what Isaac Newton said. He said, if I have an apple and you have an apple, and we exchange apples, what do we have? We have one apple each. But if I have an idea, and you have an idea, and we exchange ideas, how many ideas do you have each? Two ideas, right? There is something about the nature of an intangible idea in that it defies the conventional idea of what a physical good is. A physical good might be limited because it is constrained by its physicality. If I have a pen and I'm writing with it, unfortunately, you cannot be writing with the same pen. In economics, it's called a competitive good. The nature of an intangible is that it's not a competitive good. Right? The second thing, very, very important question, is what does it mean to own information in such a way that I exclude somebody else from using it? Let me give you an example. In copyright, there is a principle called idea-expression dichotomy. We normally popularly think of copyright as protecting ideas. But actually, here is the interesting thing. Copyright doesn't protect ideas. It only protects unique expressions of ideas. And what's the difference between the two? Boy meets girl. They fall in love. They run away. If this is an idea that is protected, 
it's the end of Bollywood, Sandalwood, Tollywood, and Collywood as we know it, right? On the other hand, boy meets girl, they meet in a train going through Europe, girl comes to Punjab, boy follows girl to Punjab, many, many things, eventually they live happily ever after. What do we have? DDLJ, Dilwale Dulaniya Le Jayenge, a unique expression of the idea, boy meets girl, they fall in love. Now, one of the reasons why Gandhiji was so reluctant to use copyright was he understood very fundamentally two things. One, many of you might know that Gandhiji did not believe in property. He believed in the idea of trusteeship, right? That we only hold things for someone else. Who is that someone else? Community, future, societal interest, right? They, that you're a custodian. You have been given a responsibility for holding things. It's not that you are an owner, which means that your right is to exclude people. It's you have a duty to what you own. And he believed that knowledge was fundamentally about a responsibility that you had to that which came before you and that which comes after you, right? He believed that how can you ever ensure the continuation of knowledge if you're not allowed access? All of you are students. As a student, I know that one of the greatest challenges was how unaffordable books were, right? Books were extremely, extremely expensive. And if I didn't have the photocopying machine, and we're very close to Maleshwaram, you know, there's on, in Maleshwaram, there's an entire line of, of, of photocopiers. And I would often go straight from National Law School in, in, in Nagarbhavi to Maleshwaram to get these expensive books photocopied. And they were essential. Now, a way, the way that copyright is going is that it increasingly makes it more and more and more difficult and increasingly even makes it criminal for you to engage in what is actually a very ordinary practice of knowledge sharing. So the power of what you know, Ohm is doing as well as what Carl is doing is that it's inviting you to become a part of a community that actually says that we are servants of knowledge. We are not masters of knowledge. As servants of knowledge, we work for knowledge because we are its custodians and we hand it generation to generation with an ethic of care, with a sense of a responsibility. There's a very beautiful story by someone called, um, it's, it's called, a book called The Little Prince. Have any of you read The Little Prince? It's a book that I, I read when I was very young. And the story is basically about the you know, adventures of a little prince. And one of the adventures of the little prince is the little prince encounters a businessman on a planet. And he asks the businessman, what is it that you do? The businessman says, I own stars. He says, oh, and what do you do with the stars that you own? So he says, oh, I sell the stars, and I make a lot of money. So the little prince says, okay, that's good, but then what do you do with the money? He says, I buy more stars. So the little prince is a little perplexed. He doesn't understand. So he tells the businessman, he says, I own three volcanoes and three flower pots. And two of these volcanoes don't even work, but I still clean them every day, in case one day they start working. And I water my flower pots, and I tend to my flowers. And he says, I am of some use to what it is that I own, but you're of no use to what it is that you own. And I think a Gandhian philosophy of knowledge is very similarly premised. The question is not what it is that you own, but what does it mean to actually own something? And this is actually very interesting because so much of what we've inherited of copyright from the West is about ownership and exclusion. And it's only in recent years, in the 2000s, looking at the way that copyright was going and how wrong it was headed in terms of the direction, in the US, a new experiment had come up. And this was an experiment called Creative Commons. Creative Commons was based on an older practice within software which basically is something called the free software movement. And the Creative Commons license was premised on the idea that instead of saying all rights reserved, you say some rights reserved, right? Which is that 
I don't want to exclude you from using the work non-commercially. I don't want to exclude you from making adaptations, etc. But a hundred years before Creative Commons had this radical idea called some rights reserved, we already had one man, Mickey Mouse, the Indian Mickey Mouse, not the American Mickey Mouse, who already had declared very radically no rights reserved. And I think it's important to keep in mind in a place like this, where many of you who are very, very familiar with dig digital technologies, that when we say that scanning is the new spinning, it's to keep in mind the fact that not only did you know, Gandhiji have something to say about copyright, he in fact had something which was prophetic, he had something that was radical and revolutionary, and actually it might well be now about returning to some of those ideas in the 21st century to actually make a slightly more sane system, a workable system that treats knowledge as not a commodity, but really as a holding that we have for the future. Happy to take more questions if you have any, but for now, thank you for your patience, and let's all participate together in the new spinning that we're wel welcoming you to. Thank you. Namaskara. Kannada dal matada bada? Okay. Nantra on English ke switch chakta ne. Ni melitra mande, nani ga ondo Pandora box open marta jini. Okay. So we spoke a lot about the knowledge, right? How we are going to preserve and how we need to preserve, how we need to share. Hadar bagge Lawrence heli dare, Carl heli dare. Nimgi agle gutta ki rohage, Carl nani ge Bengaluru nali sikka ga bahalas to Pustakagalana, USK, Kalskoto, Ali Avagalana digitized Madi, Namkisigog Martedro. New Nord than the Hins Faraj collection erbodo, Jai Gyan collection erbodo. Indians who Nama government workagalana preserve Markondo, Mundina Jananga Ke, Ulspodu Anta, Arathkolaketa Munche, Auru Namge, Idanella, Udgaria Kotidara. Yenik Sadia Iton Tandra, Yala or Katanu Elderanim, Ek Madidro, Mate Egadana, Auro Muneton Bantranta. Ivatu, Nanili, Nimgi Torsanta, one this to Chitragulu, one this to URL Guru, Nama Kanada da Katena, Jotege, Nama India the Lina, very, very Bashigala, Istondu, Nanavana, Yavriti Ulusik Pratna Partivana, Nimundeda. Then I rather recognize Martira Inido Talagari. So Bhalas to Bharatiya knowledge nimgi tar talegar galali patra galali sigatte alva noted tira idna. Idu liru anta yalla mahiti na na wo odli kagatta yarado try maadli try maadi the yarado nodi dera talegar galana. Alagana nodi dera okay. Alagana da odi rorge a akshar galana to shasan galana odi rorge. Idalironta Maitiana would click a Sadje. Other Yeldrigodu, Sadja Agder Bodu. Other Ivatu Tantrignana, Namike Kotironta, Avkashagalindagi. Now Idalira Maitiana would click a Sadje. Other Wodakinta Munche, Augulana Navu, Woodspekagaranta, Tumba Mukke Kalsana Munde. Ignore Tidala, Ichitradale, a Talagarina open Madagadu, Alak Tok Terazan in Nordabu. Then a preserve Marbeco. Is in a clean Marbeco Agaga, Mate Ugrana, Navo, inking and tail to Balas of Berebera process Lagate, Anantra Ulana Navo, Wolds Colta Octavi. Adre E. Process and a Marodu, Tumba, Stramada Kalasa, other Ugrana Wolds Colebek with them, you know, source manuscripts. Is in a la Madonta on the Sandra Badali, now we are a digital Yugadali, digital Tantragnana on a Bells Col Bardo. And the Yosne Madanta Sandra Badali Bahalas to Sadja Tekanam Edgar Bandu. Modern is like Internet Archive. Internet Archive only it's a non profit organization. It gives a community a power to uh, preserve some of our digital content online. Video Agir Bodu, Agla, video do demo torsidro, audio demo torsidro, Pustigalana Nodri. Yella Sadja Tekalana now Ali Kankolika Sadjaito. But the Lawrence or Eldage, Creative Commons. Nana Nana Bali Yeronta, 
ಮಾಹಿತಿಯನ್ನು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ನಾನು ಬೇರೆಯವ್ರಿಗೆ ಸೇವ್ ಮಾಡಲಿ ಕಾಪಿರೈಟ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾ ನಂತರ ಕಾಪಿರೈಟ್ನ ವಯೋಲೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಹಾಗೆ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡೋದು ಹೇಗೆ ಸೊ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ವಿಚಾರಗಳನ್ನು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ನಾವು ಡಿಜಿಟಲ್ ಲೈಬ್ರರಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾದಲ್ಲಿರುವಂಥ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಮಾಹಿತಿಯನ್ನು ನಾವು ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ವಿ ಆ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಲ್ ನಮಗೆ ಒಂದು ಒಳ್ಳೆಯ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ನ ಹಾಕ್ಕೊಟ್ರು ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ಗಳನ್ನ ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ಹೇಗೆ ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ಆ್ಯಡ್ ದ ಮೆಟ ಡೇಟಾ ವಿಚ್ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಸೆಸಬಲ್ ಟು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಸಚ್ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಸೊ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡೋ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇವತ್ತು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಒಂದರೊಳಗೇ ಸುಮಾರು ಹದಿನಾಲ್ಕಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಕನ್ನಡ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಭಾಷೆಗಳ ಮಾಹಿತಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ಡ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ತಮಿಳ್ ಕೊಂಕಣಿ ಒಡಿಯಾ ತೆಲುಗು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಟ್ ಸಿಂಧಿ ಮತ್ತು ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಭಾಷೆಯ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಸೊ ಇವುಗಳನ್ನು ನಾನು ನಿಮಗೆ ತೋರಿಸ್ತಾ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಕಥೆಗಳನ್ನು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಹೇಗೆ ಆಯಿತು ಇದು ಅಂತಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಕಸ್ತೂರಿ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝಿನ್ ಕೇಳಿದ್ದೀರ ತುಂಬ ಏನು ಹಳೆಯ ಪತ್ರಿಕೆ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಇದರ ಐವತ್ತು ವರ್ಷದ ಸಂಚಿಕೆಗಳು ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದೆ ಇದೆ ಇವುಗಳನ್ನು ನೀವು ನೇರವಾಗಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಸಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಯಾವಾಗ ಯಾರು ಏನು ಬರೆದ್ರು ಅಂತ ನೀವು ಓದ್ಬೋದು ನೀವು ಕಾಲಾನುಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟೀಸಿಂದ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈಂಟೀಸ್ವರೆಗೂ ಹೇಗೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಪತ್ರಿಕೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಮಾಜದ ಮುಖ್ ಸಮಾಜವನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದೆ ಇಡ್ತಾ ಬಂತು ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನು ನೀವು ನೋಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇದೆ ಇದು ಈ ಒಂದು ಪತ್ರಿಕೆ ನಮಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕೈಗೆ ಸಿಗಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗಿದ್ದು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿಯಿಂದ ಪಾವ್ಯಂ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಈ ಒಂದು ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಯ ಸಂಪಾದಕರಾಗಿದ್ದರು ಅವರ ಮೊಮ್ಮಗಳು ಅವರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೃತಿಗಳನ್ನು ಅವರು ಬರೆದಿದ್ದಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಲೇಖನಗಳನ್ನು ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಡೈರಿಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಹಾಳಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಮತ್ತು ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝೀನ್ಸ್ಗಳು ಸಿಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಹೀಗೆ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಇದನ್ನು ತಲೆನೆ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನನ್ನ ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಇವುಗಳನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಜನರಿಗೆ ನೇರವಾಗಿ ಕೊಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೀರಾ ಆರ್ ಯು ರೆಡಿ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾವ್ಯಮ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಟು ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದಾಗ ಶಿ ರೆಡಿಲಿ ಅಗ್ರೀಡ್ ಶಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರೇಡಿವ್ ಕಾಮನ್ಸ್ ಶಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ವೈ ವಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಒ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಒ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಿದರು ಆಪ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೇಷನ್ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಚಿತ್ರವನ್ನು ನೀವು ಒ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಮೂಲಕ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟನ್ನು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಯಾಟನ್ನು ನಿಮಗೆ ಕೊಡುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ನೀವು ವಿ ಎಟ್ ಒ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಬಳಸಿರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಗೂಗಲ್ ಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಳಸಿರ್ಬೋದು ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಯೂ ಬಳಸುವಂಥ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಆಪ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೇಷನ್ ಆ ಒಂದು ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿಯನ್ನು ಬಳಸಿ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳನ್ನು ಒ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಮಾಡಲಾಗಿದೆ ಸೊ ಇದರೊಳಗಿರೋಂಥ ಕಂಟೆಂಟನ್ನು ನೇರವಾಗಿ ನೀವು ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಆಗಲೇ ನಾವು ಏನು ಗಾಂಧಿಯ ಕೋಟ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಸರ್ಚ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಲ್ಲ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನಾವು ಪಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೋದು ಸೊ ಪಾವ್ಯಮ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅವರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೃತಿಗಳು ನಮಗೆ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಆ ಸಿಗೋ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಕಸ್ತೂರಿ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝಿನ್ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಶಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪೇಪರ್ ಕಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗಝೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಸೆಟ್ ವೈ ಡೆಂಟ್ ಯು ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷರ್ ಟು ವರ್
ಜನರಿಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾಹಿತಿನ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಂದ ಬರುವಂಥ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಗಳಿಗೆ ಕೂಡ ಅವರು ಸಿನಿಮಾದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮತ್ತು ರಂಗಭೂಮಿಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅವರು ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅವರು ಮಾಡಿದಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲಸಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಅವರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾತುಕತೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝಿನ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನವ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ನವ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಗಾಂಧಿ ಭವನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಅಗ್ರೀಡ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗಝೀನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಓನ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಅನಂತರಾಮು ಹೂಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ನೋನ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ರೈಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಿಯಾಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಹೂಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಹೂ ಅಗ್ರೀ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಈಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಶೇರ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಮೇಜರ್ಲಿ ವಿತ್ ಕಿಡ್ಸ್ ಈ ರಿಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಕ್ರೀಡಿ ಕಾಮನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ನೀವು ಇವತ್ತು ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಬೋದು ಮತ್ತು ಎಷ್ಟು ಯಾರು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಯಾರಿಗಾದರೂ ಎಷ್ಟು ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಗಳು ಬಂದಿರ್ಬೋದು ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂತ ಯಾರಿಗಾದರೂ ಜ್ಞಾಪಕ ಇದೆಯಾ ಸೊ ಯಾರಿಗಾದರೂ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದಾ ಭಾಳಷ್ಟು ಹೆಸರುಗಳಿದೆ ಅದು ಹೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಕಷ್ಟ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಆ ಹೆಸರನ್ನ ನೀವು ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ನೂರಾರು ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಗಳು ನೂರಾರು ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝಿನ್ಗಳು ಬಂದು ಹೋಗಿದೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿರೋಂಥ ಬಂದಿದ್ದಂಥ ಹಳೆಯ ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನು ಇವತ್ತು ನಮಗೆ ಸಮ್ ಜನರ ಮೂಲಕ ನಾವು ಅದನ್ನು ಪಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅವುಗಳನ್ನು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂತರಂಗ ಒಂದು ಜಯಂತ್ ಕಾಯ್ಕಿಣಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಕೇಳಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಎಷ್ಟೇನ ಕೇಳಿಲ್ವಾ ಓಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೇಳಿದ್ದೀರಲ್ಲ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ನೋನ್ ಲಿರಿಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಸಾಹಿತಿ ರೈಟರ್ ಅವರ ಕಥೆಗಳು ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಗೊತ್ತು ಅಲ್ವಾ ಅವರು ನಡೆಸ್ತಿದ್ದಂಥ ಒಂದು ಪತ್ರಿಕೆ ಕೇವಲ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಕಾಲು ವರ್ಷ ಏನೋ ರನ್ ಆಯಿತು ಆ ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ನೀವು ಇವತ್ತು ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ನೋಡ್ಬೋದು ಭಾಳಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಈ ಪತ್ರಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನ ಹುಡುಕ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಸಿಗ್ತಾ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಇವತ್ತು ಸಿಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮುಂಚೆ ಅವ್ರು ಏನು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತಂದರೆ ತನ್ನ ಅಪ್ಪನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೃತಿಗಳನ್ನು ನಮಗೆ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅವಕಾಶ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಟ್ರು ಗೌರೀಶ್ ಕಾಯ್ಕಿಣಿ ಅವರ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರು ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಮಗೆ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತು ಸಮಗ್ರನೂ ಕೂಡ ನಿಮಗೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಡಿ ಎಸ್ ನಾಗಭೂಷಣ್ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಭವನ್ ಸುತ್ತ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದವರು ಗಾಂಧಿಯ ಕಥವನ್ನ ಕಥನವನ್ನು ಬರೆದವರು ಹೊಸ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝಿನ್ ಬರಿತಿದ್ರು ಅದು ಕೂಡ ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಮಗೆ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಒಂದಾಣೆ ಮಾಲೆ ಮಂಗಳೂರು ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಯಾರಾದ್ರು ಇದ್ದಾರ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೋಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಆ ಕಡೆ ಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನು ಪ್ರಸರಣೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ದೇ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಒಂದು ಆಣೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಡಾಲರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಒಂದು ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಈ ಒಂದು ಆಣೆ ಮಾಲೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಒಂದು ಆಣೆಗೆ ಒಂದು ಪುಸ್ತಕವನ್ನು ಜನರಿಗೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅದು ಹೇಗೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಆ ಆ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಿತ್ತು ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಥರದ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ನಿಮಗೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಆಣೆ ಮಾಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಅದಷ್ಟನ್ನು ನಾವು ಕುಡುಪಿ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಶನೆಯವರ ಮಗನ ಹತ್ರ ಪಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅವುಗಳನ್ನು ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವು ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಆ ಮಾಹಿತಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಈಗ ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಅಥವಾ ವಿಜ್ಞ
ನಂತರ ನವಲಗುಂದದ ಒಂದು ಕಾಲೇಜು ಶಂಕರ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೈನ್ ಕಾಮರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅವರು ತಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿದ್ದಂತಹ ಹತ್ತನೇ ಹನ್ನೊಂದನೇ ಶತಮಾನದ ಎಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಕೃತಿಗಳನ್ನು ಹಾಳಾಗ್ತಿದ್ದಂಥ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ನಮಗೆ ಕಳಿಸ್ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಅವುಗಳನ್ನು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಈಗ ತಾಡಪತ್ರಗಳು ಹೇಗಿರ್ತವೆ ಹಳೆಯ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ಗಳು ಹೇಗಿರ್ತವೆ ಅಂತ ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಿಮಗೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಯಕ್ಷಗಾನ ವಿಶ್ವಕೊಂಕಣಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಕಾರ್ಲ್ ಅವರು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನು ವಿಶ್ವಕೊಂಕಣಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ಗೆ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋದರು ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡುವಂಥ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕೊಂಕಣಿ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಓಕೆ ವಿಶ್ವಕೊಂಕಣಿ ಅಂತಲೂ ನೀವು ಹುಡುಕಿದ್ರೆ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ವೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಶ್ವಕೊಂಕಣಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ನಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಸ್ಟಾಫ್ ಇವತ್ತು ಅವರೇ ಅದನ್ನು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಬಹಳ ಹಳೆಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಗಂಗೋತ್ರಿ ಕಿರಿಯರ ವಿಶ್ವಕೋಶ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀಸ್ನಲ್ಲೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಎನ್ಸೈಕ್ಲೋಪೀಡಿಯಾ ಫಾರ್ ಕಿಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಓಕೆ ನಿರಂಜನ ಅವರು ಅದನ್ನು ಸಂಪಾದನೆ ಮಾಡಿದರು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಇವತ್ತು ಈ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸೇಷನ್ ಕಾರ್ಯಗಳಿಂದಾಗಿ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದೆ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಜಿ ಟಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ರಾವ್ ಎರಡು ಸಾವಿರದ ಹತ್ತರಲ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ತನ್ನ ಕೃತಿಗಳನ್ನು ತಾವಾಗೇ ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳದೆ ಜಿ ಟಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಮಗ ಅದನ್ನೇನು ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ರು ಅವರು ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನು ಜನರಿಗೆ ಸಿಗಲಿ ಅಂತ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ರು ಅವುಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ಮೊದಲನೇ ಬಾರಿಗೆ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಕಾಮನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಸೆನ್ಸ್ಗಳಿಗೆ ರೀ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಿಸಿದ್ವಿ ಇದು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರಿಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಕಾಮನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಬೈ ಜಿ ಟಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ರಾವ್ ನಕ್ಷತ್ರಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ವಿಷಯಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಓದ್ಬೋದು ಐನ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಬರೀತಾರೆ ಕೋಪನಿಕಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಬರೀತಾರೆ ಕೊಡಗಿನ ಎಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಸುಮಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಬರೀತಾರೆ ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಪಾವ್ಯಂ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅವರ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅವರ ಪರ್ಸ್ನಲ್ ಡೈರಿಯಿಂದ ಹಿಡಿದು ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದನ್ನು ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಮತ್ತು ಎ ಪಿ ಮಾಲತಿ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಯಂಗ್ ರೈಟರ್ ವು ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಅರ್ ಬುಕ್ ನ್ಯೂ ನಾವೆಲ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ವೆರಿ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಓಕೆ ಅವರು ತಮ್ಮ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೃತಿಗಳನ್ನು ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಸಿಗಲಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಸರ್ವೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಜೊತೆ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವುಗಳನ್ನು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಹಾಕಿದರು ಇದು ಹಾಕಿದ ನಂತರ ನಮ್ಮ ಕೋಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಥ ಒಬ್ಬರು ಲೇಖಕಿ ಇದ್ದರು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಜನರಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಆಯಿತು ಅಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೂ ಇವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಇವತ್ತು ಅವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇಬ್ಬರು ಮೂವರು ಜನ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರು ಬರೆದಿರೋಂಥ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅದು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸೇಷನ್ದ ಆಗಿರೋಂಥ ಕೆಲಸ ಓ ಎಲ್ ನಾಗಭೂಷಣ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಯವರು ನಮ್ಮ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ವಚನ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯದ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸೇಷನ್ಗೆ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಂಥವ್ರು ಅವ್ರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೃತಿಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಅನಂತರಾಮ ಅವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ನಾನು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡ್ತೀರಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ್ ಹಾವನೂರ್ ತುಂಬ ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಹೆಸರು ನೀವು ವಚನ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ದಾಸ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಇಂಥದ್ದೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾತಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಪತ್ರಿಕೋದ್ಯಮದ ಇಡೀ ಇತಿಹಾಸವನ್ನು ಒಟ್ಟುಗೂಡಿಸ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಟ್ಟವರು ಅವರು ಅವರೆಲ್ಲ ಕೃತಿಗಳು ಇವತ್ತು ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಇದೆ ಇವರ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಂದಾಗಿ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವು ಈ ದಸ್ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯದ ಐವತ್ತು ಸಂಪುಟಗಳನ್ನು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಹಾಕಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಯಿತು ಸಾವಿರಾರು ಕೀರ್ತನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಇವತ್ತು ನೀವು ಓದಿ ನೋಡ್ಬೋದು ಅದು ಇದೆ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಭಂಡಾರಿ ಅವರ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳಿವೆ ಹೀಗೆ ನಾನು ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋದರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಇಡ
ಮಾತನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸ್ತೀನಿ ಆ ನಂತರ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ತಗೊಳ್ಬೋದು ಸೊ ಇದು ನಮ್ಮ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸೇಷನ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಲಾ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಹುಡುಗರು ಹೇಗೆ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿಯ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನರ್ನ ಬಳಸ್ತಾರೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನು ನೀವಿಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಿ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ಆಳ್ ಮಾಡಬಾರ್ದು ಮತ್ತು ಅವುಗಳನ್ನು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸ್ ಮಾಡೋ ಬರೋದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವುಗಳು ಪುಡಿ ಆಗಬಾರ್ದು ಅಥವಾ ಕೆಡಬಾರ್ದು ಇದು ಹಾಳಾಗಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಾವು ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ಆರ್ಕೈವ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನರ್ಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಳಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ನೀವೀಗ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಇವುಗಳನ್ನು ಯು ಎಸ್ನಿಂದ ತರಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ತುಂಬ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಸೊ ಅದರಿಂದಾಗಿ ಇವತ್ತು ವಿ ಮೇಕ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿ ರನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಹೈ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಸೊ ಇದರೊಂದಿಗೆ ನನ್ನ ಮಾತು ಮುಗಿಯುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳಿಗೆ ಇದು ನೋಡ್ತೀನಿ ನೀವು ಕಂಫರ್ಟಬಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಯಾವ ಭಾಷೆನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕಾಗತ್ತೋ ಕೇಳಿ ಲಾ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಡಿಜಿಟೈಸೇಷನ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಬೇರೆ ಏನೇ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳಿದ್ದರೂ ನೀವು ನಮ್ಮ ಮೂರು ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಇವಾಗ ಕೇಳ್ಬೋದು ನೀವು ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಅದನ್ನು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅನುವಾದ ಮಾಡಿ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು microphone uh, we have time for a few questions uh, we have a few minutes left uh, does anybody have any questions if you don't ask questions we ask you no, please please uh, we have an audience mic here please speak in the mic perfect sir i have two questions my name is prajwal uh, sir first question is that uh, you told that many manuscripts uh, have been translated uh, through the digitalized Uh, that they are in the old languages sir the alphabets are bit different and uh, it has a influence of many languages on the alphabets is there any technology that uh, it can be translated that we can also read it okay so first thing is we are trying to extract that content digitally right so first we are taking the photographs of that most of the old scripts we might not be able to read but there are efforts to create something called as revival fonts right revival fonts uh, today you have fonts for kannada you have fonts for tamil telugu uh, english etc right so but for old uh, scripts you don't have such facility but it is possible for any of you to build fonts okay you need to learn engineering uh, font design and then get started and today we are working on building fonts which will which rep- represent the text that we see in older kannada books already we came up with a font called kittle font right that can be used to uh, uh, enhance the ocr to read the books that were printed from 1800s okay similarly if we uh, put additional efforts to create fonts which match the ma- uh, the works that you see on the manuscripts in future you might be able to r- read them and extract them as a editable text once it is extracted then you can use translation tools right so today if you actually type something in any language google translator gives you an option to translate it to other languages right similarly there are a lot of new technology and lot of new startups working on building translation tools okay in future when we start building the corpus the word corpus the knowledge corpus you will you'll be able to use it for your natural language processing uh, projects and then build the technology that is required to be able to uh, make this happen we are in fact using some of the translation uh software uh google has a very good version and uh for example if you look at the ramayan uh the the closed captions were in hindi uh we translated it into 109 languages it's not perfect and there are ways that if if you really work at it hard you can come up with vocabularies you can say when you see this word make it that word when you see this phrase make it that phrase that's expensive because you have to build a big dictionary uh, so we're beginning to to play with that and we're we're making some progress but it it's one of the things that ai is going to be able to do that's useful as opposed to chat gpt which pretends it's going to write a term paper for you but the term paper is going to be wrong um it's going to make stuff up um <laughs> but but uh, language translation is something that that shows some promise so thank you yeah okay so thank you i have another question is this process uh, generating some revenue or income to the government uh our work 
Yes, sir. No, no, no. So we don't take any government money. Uh, we don't work with government. Uh, we are uh, taking works of government on occasion and buying them and then scanning them and putting them online. Uh, and we do talk to government, right? So I, I spend, uh, when I come to India, I spend half my time in Delhi and half my time in Bangalore. And I, I pay courtesy visits on, on many people in different departments. So they're aware of our work. Uh, but no, we, we, um, we do this outside of government. I, it's a philosophy I adopted a long time ago. Um, we, we, we want them to take what we're doing. So, for example, some of the things we scanned, uh, we sent letters to the government saying, you know, we've got all these great scans here. Why don't you put them on your website? And we're hoping that, that maybe they will adopt those. So, yeah. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Next question, please. Anybody else? There we go. So my name is Tejas. So as you know, the knowledge reservoirs like this were in Library of Alexandria and the Library of Takshila also, which got burned and destroyed. So my concern is, how are you protecting this knowledge from getting destroyed the same way? Well, there's two answers to that. One is we are helping protect it by scanning it, right? And, and libraries get destroyed, they get burned, they're, they're, there's water, um, there's bad people that steal the books. And so one of the things we do is we scan uh, um, the books. Now, now here's your sec the, the second answer is this. Uh, computers go down as well, right? And so if you only have one copy of the scans, as you may know, uh, you lose your disk and you lose everything. So we, we're very careful about making many copies. So everything goes to the Internet Archive, and that's well backed up, right? That's many computers or several copies of each item. We also have a very large computer here in Bangalore, and so everything we scan, we pull back down pull back down to, to, um, to Bangalore, and we have copies there. I have large computers as well um, in my house and in my basement and in other locations, and we make copies. There's a saying, lots of copies keeps things safe. That's actually one of the reasons that, that when the government puts a website up uh, with, with materials like Ministry of Culture, we want to make a copy of that because maybe the government system will break. Um, and, and so that's what one of the things that it's really important to, to be doing. Thank you. Thank you. More questions, please. There we go, right back there. Good afternoon, sir. Myself, Mansudan. Digital technology transformation has its own benefits, but we need an electronic device to access it. How can we make all of the digital format knowledge accessible to regions where there is no strong infrastructure? That's a really important question. Um, and so that's not something we are doing. Um, but you know, there are significant efforts in India and in other places to address that. It's one of the pressing issues of our time. One of the reasons we are digitizing the National Law School of India University, it's got the largest law library of any law school. We want to make that material available to every law student in India. Um, likewise, uh, you need connectivity into the villages, um, into the places that don't have it. You know, here you have great connectivity. Uh, you go to other schools in more remote areas and you don't. Uh, we noticed during COVID, and, and Professor Liang can certainly vouch for that, um, he was forced to conduct his classes over the net, right, because of, of the lockdown. Many of his students didn't have a laptop. Or they had a phone, but they shared the phone with their sister and their brother and their uncle. Um, and their connectivity was not great. Um, so it's a pressing concern. Uh, we're doing one part of the puzzle, but we're not the only answer. And it, it requires a, a large common effort. And that's why we say servants of knowledge. So we're, we're a somewhat industrial operation, right? We, we've got these big, expensive scanners. We scan 12 lock pages every month. We're doubling that capacity. But we want other people doing other things, right? Uh, maybe your passion is palm leaves, or maybe your passion is some magazine, or maybe you're interested in a subject. Uh, bread labor and public work means everybody should be doing it. And if we all do that, rather than waiting for what I call a service um, a version of government, a vending machine, right? You, you pay your taxes and out comes your benefits. Um, you can't depend on government to do all this for you. That, that's why you have to do it yourself. Um, and everybody has to do public work and everybody has to do bread labor. So. Thank you, sir. 
So I want to add few things to what Carl said. Yes, we don't have a last mile connectivity to many of the digital transformation that we are bringing in, right? But Internet Archive allows you to download all the content in multiple formats, and people are already making use of it. I have a, a very good friend, a professor, who is also a theater uh, personality from Rangayana, who actually takes the works that we have digitized, keeps in his uh, laptop, and whenever he goes to remote places to give lecture or give any uh, insights to the students about uh, theater, he shows the works that we have digitized. So these are the type of stories that we actually get to keep hearing from uh, people who actually use the works. Okay. Similarly, I went to uh, BR Hills. I met a wonderful uh, set of people who are setting up a small computer lab. And we showed them how they can actually uh, display all the Canada science literature to the uh, kids. Whenever there is uh, internet, they can download it and keep it, and then they can give it to the students to actually use it. So these are the few experiments that we are doing. But there are a lot of other possibilities and innovations that you people can also do with the data that we have. Yeah. Uh, today, to be a library and to serve books up, the images, is, is somewhat difficult. It requires some real technology. One of the efforts we have underway is simplifying library software. So what you could do is download some objects to a little disk drive, put them on a small computer, right, a Mac Mini or even a laptop, and go out someplace to a village, and it's not hard to set up, assuming you have the electricity working. Even if you don't, you can do solar. Uh, you can set up Wi-Fi in the village, Right, and you can begin serving the books up there. Even if the internet isn't working, you can do it locally. And so we're, we're, we're trying to move in, in that direction if we can. Uh, next question, please. Uh, Sujit Ji, this is our colleague, leading expert on Tamil film. Hi, Carl. Hi, Om. Uh, can you tell us in brief, since I'm from Tamil Nadu, uh, can you tell us in brief about the material uh, associated um, Tamil material, uh, the kind of people you met and the initiatives that you've taken. And in particular, I think uh, the Naradar magazine collection was an amazing collection. It's, it's a very good effort, uh, similar to the various collections of Kannada magazines that you had showed. So can you tell us a bit brief about that? Yeah. Thank you. So uh, Tamil uh, books, yes, it's a very important uh, collaboration that I wanted to mention. So we actually showed you how Konkani work was digitized, right? Similarly, I had a wonderful set of friends from Wikimedia uh, movement, uh, Teach Srinivasan and his team. They reached out and said uh, uh, they wanted to like make use of our Servants of Knowledge initiative. Similarly, Carl already had uh, talks with Roja Muthaya Research Library in Chennai, where we set up our uh, one of our scanners and we digitized a lot of uh, old Tamil books. You can find the, all of those materials on uh, Severance of Knowledge collection today. Apart from that, the Tamil community was very interesting. The, they always used to find a lot of these old magazines from telegram groups and uh, various other uh, uh, wiki source and wiki commons related uh, uh, communities that they have built. They also have a very uh, interesting group of students joining uh, uh, on a month-on-month -month basis to do some hackathons. They bring in uh, technology topics or they actually bring in material like this and they actually uh, see what, how they can actually digitize them or how they can actually come up with some solutions. So those are the efforts which actually helped us digitize some of these uh, Tamil magazines. I still don't get m many of the magazine names by default like the way I do for Canada, but yes. So T. Srinivasan and his uh, team's work is very commendable in helping us build the corpus related to Tamil. And I keep hearing the way actually like uh, the Internet Archive uh, helps uh, people like uh, him to uh, talk about old cinema. So that is very fascinating, yes. One more question? Yes, sir. Uh, why there is no app for this thing, sir? Um, it's, it works on a mobile phone. Um, I, um, I don't know. Uh, so the Internet Archive is an interesting operation, and we use them as our, our user interface. Um, it's huge. It's big. Uh, it, it's difficult. And their user interface is good. Um, 
it ain't great. Um, and um, so I don't know. I'm sure they're developing an app. Uh, they're getting better on the mobile phones. Uh, for a while there, it was really bad. Um, but it, it works pretty well. Um, I, I think that's one of those things we're hoping some guy, so, you know, there's an API that goes to the Internet Archive, right? You, you can do calls, there's command line tools. You could write an app that, that, that is a front end to the Internet Archive and all, all the functions of search inside the text and, you know, display results and what years are, are, are with this search, those are all exposed. Um, so I guess we're just waiting for someone to write the app, either the people at the Internet Archive or somebody else. So the answer is I don't know why. Um, <laughs> one I more question. Please, two more, a couple more questions. Yes, please. Uh, we'll, we'll do th three more. By the way, we were talking about film. I don't know if you know about Padma, P-A-D dot M-A, uh, a leading, leading server of film. Um, in India. Uh, Professor Liang is a lawyer, right? He's a noted intellectual property scholar, but he's also one of the creators of Padma. He has a PhD in film studies from JNU. And so if you want to talk about film in India, uh, this is your person. Um, <laughs> please, Hello, your question, ma'am. Sir, as you are not, uh, not taking any of the funds from the governments, neither you are, and you are working in a non-profit organization, where do you get the source for this All Works funding? Through what source, sir? Can we know? So uh, a lot of our, our, so we have many volunteers, right? Uh, they don't get paid. Um, Public Resource, which is the nonprofit organization that I had, it's US based, uh, has received a, a sizable grant from Arcadia. And Arcadia is a, a foundation in the United Kingdom. Uh, the founders there have given over a billion dollars away in the last 10 years. They're adamant about endangered languages, so they fund a lot of programs in India for endangered languages. Uh, they're uh, very strong in open science, right, making journal articles and science available. And for some reason, they like me, and they, they gave us a, a very nice grant. So, so we also get um, donations. So in the United States, a donation to an organization like mine is tax deductible, um, and individuals give us money. There, there's a number of individuals that every month give $10 or $20. Uh, I, I grew up you know, on the Internet, and I know many people that went on to make a billion dollars, um, huge amount. I, I've worked in nonprofits. Uh, some of them, once a year, give a donation at the end of the year. So that, that's how our work is funded. That's great, so yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We had uh, a couple more questions here. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, so my question is that, as you told, copyright is a major thing. And it's like a challenge to you initially. So apart from copyright, what do you think are the other challenges you have faced in digitization? Oh, getting the materials is often yeah. the hard part. Um, and so working with libraries and saying, we'd like to digitize your material, but it's got to be open access, right? So sometimes people are like, oh, if you scan it, that's fine, but we want to keep it ourselves and we'll build a portal. You know, there's a lot of places in India in which they've digitized a lot of materials. You can only read them on a flip book, right? You can't download it. Uh, so it's, it's low resolution and every page has got a watermark on it. Um, it's, it's getting over that mindset is one of the, the biggest challenges. Uh, the other one is metadata. It's, 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 it's easy to digitize. But, you know, what are the keywords and the titles and the creators and the date that let you, you know, find things that you're looking for and sort properly? So, so that's a significant issue. In fact, many of our volunteers help us on that. Uh, when we brought in the Tamil Virtual Academy uh, scans, a lot of their metadata was wrong. Titles were wrong. And, and we've had volunteers kind of systematically walk through and, and double check it. So that's a big one. Uh, other obstacles? Okay, uh, next question, please. Okay, sir, thank, thank you. you. Hello, sir. My name is Ashwini. I, firstly, I want to congratulate and appreciate for the cause that you have done, sir. So I didn't know about the voice that we could hear about Gandhiji and we, uh, Ta Ta Tagore also. So uh, I get to know about the more information about the books that I can read and magazines. And I also need the facility that I want to read the other languages in that uh, other country the authors would have written. So that can I get that uh, facility or a, a resource from other country that other authors or writers have written? So can I get that those books 
that, that kind of yes video. yes so I ran the first radio station on the internet and as part of that in 1993 so the name of that collection is RT hyphen FM okay. um, and I cut a deal with okay. Harper audio and so we have audio of T.S. Eliot reading The Wasteland, of Robert Frost reading The Road Not Taken. Okay. Uh, these are mostly in English. Yes, um, there's a number of other places on the Internet Archive that, that have poets reading their own work in different languages. Um, so if you go to the Internet Archive um, and dig around and do some searches, uh, some of that will, will surface. And so when you're doing a search, you can say a uh, poem and language colon French, okay, so right? And, and that, it, you know, you might need to play around with the syntax. That, that should find anything that's got the title poem or a description poem and is in the French language. Or you could say language French media type audio, okay. right? So that'll yes, bring up all audio that's in French. I got to know. Thank you, yeah, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll just add. Yes. <coughs> I just wanted to add one small thing to this, which is, you know, um, Carl said, you know, getting material is actually one of the biggest challenges. And I want to use the example of Indian cinema. We all popularly claim that India is the largest film industry in the world, right? But if you look, for example, at the history of this very, very important cultural institution, all of us have, in a way, kind of, you know, grown up uh, with an imagination of cinema, right? But if you look at the history of this institution, it is absolutely shocking because the early history of cinema, and this is one of Sujit's great anxieties, you don't have any of the films. You, know, you have something like less than 5% of actually the, ex you know, the of, of silent films even available and preserved. So what is it that you're going to build your history on? The underlying material isn't there. So in some ways, the history of cinema has been written by people who have really, you know, kind of gone digging, foraging, but even if you don't have the film, then, then, uh, then the question is, is there a poster? If you don't have a poster, is there a songbook? If you don't have a songbook, is there a list of credits? If you don't have a list of credits, and piece by piece, people have actually reconstructed in a very painstaking manner the history of cinema. And I think it's important not to start with the presumption that, oh my god, if material isn't available, we can't do anything. I think you have to start with the other way around, which is to say, oh, if material isn't available, we have to find it, right? If we don't find it, we try and supplement it. What is the best guess that we can make based on surrounding material, et cetera? And I think that that job still remains to be done. Uh, one magazine, which, for example, I really wish, and this is I've asked Om to, you know, he's my, my hunter-gatherer for this. I was so happy to see Nina Sam out here. You know, KV Subhadna is one of the great great cultural heroes of Karnataka. And what did he do? He took cinema into the villages, right? He took it as an, in, he created an intellectual space that was not in the metropoles. And I think it's a similar kind of an ethos that we need to have. There is a magazine, which I think is a great cultural repository, for example, of a certain childhood of the 80s and 70s, 80s, 90s. A magazine called Target. I don't know how many people remember, uh, published by Living Media, India Today's publisher. Incredible. Some of the best writers were writing at that point of time for, for, for Target. They went on to become you know, absolutely uh, India's most famous writers. It's difficult to find a single issue of Target today. India today doesn't have it themselves. right? So we are in the danger of losing a very, very important part of our own cultural memory. And I think in that sense, you know, the servants of knowledge is also an exercise that's committed to the idea of the preservation of memory, the preservation of culture, because you know, someone famously said that the struggle of man against power is a struggle of memory against forgetting. The, the archive I really want, All India Radio, um, it's just not available at all. Um, it, it, for, uh, the Trist with Destiny speech, by the way, uh, the, the, the thing you always hear is just an excerpt. It's not the full speech. And I can't seem to get the full speech. So, ma'am, we had a question, I believe. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. My name is Jyoti. My question to you is, what was the intention of starting digitalization and what was the, and what was the intention of starting it, sir? What was the basic intention of starting it? I think universal access to human knowledge is a great promise of our times. 
and I have spent most of my career trying to put information on the internet that was not on the internet. And that, that has moved from, you know, my early radio station and standards documents uh, to government databases, and then with our work in India, uh, branching out into a wide range of cultural materials. And why do this? Well, it's, it's every generation has an opportunity, right? If, if this were the 1920s, you might be doing radio, right? Um, if it was 1900 and you were in Calcutta, you would be writing pamphlets as part of the Bengali Renaissance. If you were in the 1950s, maybe you would be into aviation. Our world is the internet. And again, universal access to human knowledge is the thing that we can do if we do it together. And that's a legacy we can leave to the future. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. One more question, and then we are going to be done. Because um, I know I've kept you a long time, and you probably have lunch plans. So. <laughs> Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. My question is, according to you, how have you grown since the beginning? And how do you plan to grow to reach more people around the globe? Um, we're mostly focused on India right now. So our plans are right now we have, you know, uh, we're doing 12 lock pages every month. Uh, we're going to double that. We want to put 100 scanners in India and, and scan 100 crore pages of documents um, and do that in different languages in different places. So right now we're, we're in Bangalore. Uh, we want to be in the Punjab. We want to be doing Gujarat. Uh, we want to be in Calcutta and Odisha. And uh, we, we had an operation in, in Chennai, but, but uh, after COVID, we had to, to move it back here. Uh, so we're trying to spread it out. And we're trying to get other people to learn how to do the scanning and, and to create a Servants of Knowledge Academy that teaches people how to scan and then get libraries to put in their own scanners um, and volunteers to, to be scanning information. So we're trying to build a movement here. And we take inspiration from people like Aruna Roy, right, who started MKSS and did the greatest example of civil resistance. Uh, you know, her and Martin Luther King were the two examples from the last century. And she was able to inspire a movement first in Rajasthan and then throughout the entire country. And that's why you have the right to information law. Um, that's why the government is, is forced to disclose information. Eh, sometimes it doesn't observe the law. Uh, but she was able to make a dramatic change in what happened. And we think the same thing can happen in access to knowledge when, when again, you, you leave behind the vending machine model in which you pay your taxes and hope the government will do it, and they hire some contractors and you know come up with a bunch of rules. We think knowledge is something that belongs to the people, and the people are the ones that will create this public library of India. So, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, everybody. This was great. This is my favorite speech of this week. So thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, at the end, my no uh, to end my note, I would like to thank uh, this initiative of Servants of Knowledge, uh, Mr. Karl Mahmood, sir, Om Shiv Prakash, sir, Lawrence Liang, sir, who have brought this initiative. And I'm very happy that uh, um, Udaipi Krishna sir and uh, Vishu Kumar sir gave this opportunity for all our students and faculties to attend this uh, program, uh, which has actually spinned our mind today. Um, and to think about the servants of knowledge. We all normally know about knowledge partners. We have heard knowledge partners. But servants of knowledge is a new word to all of us, which has a lot of meaning. And we had a lot of takeaway today for our future, uh, for future India. Thank you, thank you one and all.